Hey, what's up everybody? I've been waiting forever to talk about the Korg DS8 on my channel because I think it's such a neat synth design. So uh, what happened here was that Korg licensed Yamaha's FM technology. Uh, this actually has a Yamaha OPM chip in, in it, and if that sounds familiar, it is because it's in a bunch of arcade machines, it's in um, a few home computers, uh, like the Sharp X68000, uh, it was in the FB01 sound module, the DX100, uh, I believe, and a bunch of other stuff. It's very similar to what's in the Sega Genesis. Uh, you know, if, and if you're overseas, you know it as the Sega Mega Drive, right? Um, it's a cool little synth, but what, what makes it really special is that they took Yamaha's kind of confusing terminology like operators and, and whatnot, um, and modulators and carriers, and they, they kind of turned it into uh, this pseudo-analog synth kind of parameter space. So, you know, instead of having operators, you have two quote-unquote oscillators that have a kind of, you know, what you could think of as a timbre envelope, which is a, you know, is, is a filter, um, or reverse that. It's... It's called the timbre envelope. It acts, it's presented to the user as if it's a filter almost. Kind of like on the Casio CZ series where they have these kind of brightness envelopes um, and it sounds filtery, but it's not a filter. Uh, this is always pure FM uh, with some onboard effects and we'll get to that later. So you can see that sounds very DX-like. And part of that is the, uh, the onboard effects. So if I turn multi-effect off, sounds a little bit less rich because it has a chorus on it. A little delay there, you know. So I want to go over kind of how how do they accomplish this? Uh, how do they arrange the parameters? Uh, so let's, let's go to the menu, and I hope everybody can can see this and. I'll kind of read it off if, you know, it's going to be kind of small. This LCD is really hard to photograph. That's why the angle is so weird. It has to be from the front because from the if you have a camera pointing the other direction from over the top of the keyboard, uh, you can't see anything on the, on the LCD. So we're going to go over to this menu where you have uh, uh, kind of these uh, oscillator 1, oscillator 2, Waveform 1, Waveform 2, and the quote-unquote waveforms are just different ways of arranging these FM pairs, a carrier and a modulator. So if you have type 1, oh man, this cursor key is also giving me trouble. Um, let me go get that fixed. Um, <laughs> the fun of old gear. Uh, so if you have type 1, that's a quote-unquote saw. Actually, let's go to the init tone here uh, because I can more easily show you kind of a... Uh, is that one? Yeah, 99. So you got a buzzy saw there. Okay. Uh, I can more easily show you how the parameters are all fit together in the init tone. So we're going to turn off the second oscillator here. Uh, how do we do that? We go to the amplitude oscillator. That's number seven. Okay. And slide level all the way down. Actually, we want the first one. We don't want the second one. So we're going to go to... Uh, Eight. Turn that one down. So now I just have the one that's a saw. Okay. And there's no effects, which is how we like it. Okay. So we're going to go back to... So, waveform one, type one. That is a quote-unquote doll saw, right? My notice this is an octave down. There's a reason for this. I'll get into. Uh, they call this a square. Uh, so if you go to spectrum two, you get these kind of square-like tones. And type three is a oh, what do they call it? Like a sharp saw. That's where we were before. And that's the same thing, but it's your, your square. 
And these aren't, you know, you might notice, well, these don't really sound like saws and squares, what's going on, and FM is what's going on. So, <laughs> well, how they've arranged this is that when you're in type 1, the, the modulator can be at uh, multiples 1, 1, 3, 5, um, you know, 7, and so on. When you're in type 2, the multiples... The, it, it sets the, the, the modulators at half, uh, and this kind of goes up the Yamaha scale, because because but if you set modulate the modulator to zero, uh, the multiple to zero on, on Yamaha gear, you go you get a sub offset, you get one half the frequency, so it goes one half, skipping one and going to two, right? So it goes one half, skip one two, you get your square, so because that's a two to one ratio. Um, four to one ratio, six to one ratio, and so on. Uh, pretty clever, pretty clever stuff. And then you have limit, where if you turn limit off, you get um, basically what this means is that it limits how much the modulation can happen. So you can't get those clangy, out of control FM sounds with a limit on. Turn it off. No, you just got massive amounts of feedback, if, if, especially if I crank up the timbre more, you can get into noise, just like a real FM synth, because this is real FM synth, it's the same chip. The way they make the sharp square and the sharp saw sounds is with feedback, and you don't get that on this next pair of operators. What you do get, so you get one, two, you know, you square, and the dull square, the dull saw, you get X mod. What is X mod? Well, so Korg keyboards always have this, like, X mod thing. Uh, in the case of this one, it chains the two operators together, so you get that four operator, you know, one, two, one going into two, going into three, going into four, going into the output kind of behavior. So you can get your kind of slap bases and stuff going, and we'll see that in a second when we go through the uh, the presets a bit. Um, so I think it's kind of clever how they present all the stuff to the user like this. It's very cool. And so what Sweden's a deal, too, is all these onboard effects. So, you know, the DX7 had six operators. This only has four, and effects are a great way to fill in that gap of kind of the richness. So I want to show you some of the uh, DS8 stuff from another angle. We're going to recreate some of that parameter space using this program, and uh, just follow my cursor here. Uh, you're looking at just part of the program, the instrument editor. We're going to turn up this carrier wave. Am I not hearing anything? Oh, the attack is off. Just a little bit. Okay. Some decay on there. So, when you have the doll sign, or sorry, the doll saw selected on the Korg DS8, what it does with the multipliers turn this oscillator on is you kind of get these intervals you get uh, 1 to 1 1 to 3 1 to 5 1 to 7 and etc uh, if you want other ratios what they do is they start you off here you notice that this is at half now and that's how Yamaha synths work, like I mentioned briefly before. Uh, the lowest setting is half, then it goes one to one, one to two, etc. So, see, it dropped an octave just like on the Korg DS8. So then you have three to one, five, five to one, you know, and so on. And the way they did the quote unquote I'll stop saying that. Oh, you want to kill me, I'm sure. Uh, the, the way they did these sharper waves, something like this. So your sharp saw, sharp square. There you go. And there's a ring mod parameter, and you can't do it here, but that's essentially a detune, a coarse detune. That the Genesis can't do, the OPN, but the OPM can. 
Uh, and then the last thing is XMOD. If you do XMOD, it's like you're doing this. Look at the operators on the side. You got four into three into two into one. And you notice that only one of them has a feedback loop because in Yamaha sense, only uh, the last operator gets a feedback loop. And that's why you can't do the sharp saw and the sharp uh, square on the second pair of operators or in Korg DS8 terms, the second oscillator. So there you go. That's kind of how this stuff all fits together. And yeah, I hope you uh, got something out of it. It was a pretty casual video, but I uh, hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time.